promised to have got the live commentary at home to Fiorentina. After, of course, last last episode's um, stellar victory over Napoli. Um, if you didn't watch the last episode, I would advise you to go back and watch it because it was a cracking game in the end, which we managed to prevail in. And um, I suppose it will set you up nicely going into this episode. Um uh, <clears throat> where we've been in actually pretty good form since the Napoli game. Since the Napoli game, which was the 2-1 win, um, with Alex scoring an equaliser from the spot in the 83rd minute and Niang winning the game in the 91st minute, we have gone unbeaten and we have not dropped a point in in both the Serie A and the Europa League since. We started this off with a tricky enough lit game away at Torino. Uh, which we kind of scrape through. We got a 1-0 win out of it in the end, with Giacomo Bonaventura scoring the only goal of the game. Um, they actually were the better team, though. They had three clear-cut chances. We didn't create a single clear-cut chance. Only two half chances for ourselves as well. So it took actually a bit of brilliance from uh, Bonaventura to get us the uh, win in this game in the end. Uh, it was a stunning free kick, I think, from the edge of the box. Which I'd like to show you guys now, if it loads. It's beginning to. So, yeah, like it was a bit of a smash and grab. As you can see, Ar Arjan Ademi got sent off for them in the 59th minute, which kind of took the wind out of their sails a little bit towards the end of the game. But they still had a good go at us. And uh, we had to stand firm defensively, because we weren't quite at it in this game. Um, not at all. And this is taking a long time. Oh, there we go, finally. Uh, for only one goal, you, here's Bonaventure, steps up, and it's a cracking free kick, just from kind of the G, outside the box. And it's just an excellent free kick uh, to give us all three points at the Olympico in Turin. And then uh, came back to the San Siro, where we managed to beat Udinese 2-1. Now this one was a bit of an odd one, um, so I'll show you guys firstly, if I can, Di Natale's miss penalty. Um, I'm not sure if we go into goals, show the goals first. Uh, Giacomo Bonaventura did exactly the same, exactly the same. It was almost a carbon copy of his goal against Torino. It was a free kick near enough to the edge of the box, which he just whips into the top corner. It was a um, almost exactly the same position, and look at that, boom. Not too shabby at all. Um, then we got a penalty ourselves, in I think the 56th minute, yeah, which Alex duly converted, as per usual, before Antonio Di Natale uh, got a go back for them in around the 73rd, I think. Um... To kind of make it a little bit edgy going into that last 15 minutes or so. But um, it could have been a lot worse for us. As there you, there you see Dean and Halley. He hit the bar and it comes gracefully back down for him. But I think it's... Yeah, they got a penalty here. I'll just uh, pause it for a second. In the 14th minute, they got a penalty. It was a bit of a... Uh, it was a harsh one, it seemed. It's one of those ones where the ball was kind of put into the middle. And there was a big swamp in the middle. And apparently Neusteyer brought somebody down. Which meant they had the chance to go one nil up to just 14 minutes. And it was Antonio Di Natale who you would have put your house on scoring a penalty for you. And look what he does here. Steps up. I'm thinking, no, 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 no. Oh my god. He has an absolute shocker. He doesn't even hit the target. He puts it miles wide. And... They end up losing the game 2-1. So they really kind of paid the penalty, I suppose, for that poor bit of play from Di Natale. Then we played Bate Barsov uh, in the Europa League. It was only our second Europa League game of the competition. And we managed to win 3-1. Made it a little harder for ourselves than I think it needed to be. As you can see from the match stats down below, 21 shots to 4. 59% of the ball. Like we, we had the majority share of everything. But we just didn't, I suppose, put the game to bed, and it really um, uh, 
They came back to bite us when they equalised in the 50th minute. Now, we took the lead in the 15th minute through Mbai Niang scoring another goal for us. Now, he's been getting a few games um, starting since his goal against Napoli and has shown a bit of a striker's touch. Like There's there's definitely something in Niang to be worked with. But um, we've got to just be uh, careful with him. Don't want to get him injured or anything massively. Here's Bonaventura, finds Ings, who just lays it off in Niang. And just to put it in, it's a, not a great bit of keeping by Zaitsev, but and nonetheless, he puts it in. Then they score this goal in the 50th minute, which is a real poor goal from our point of view. Because um, it's scrappy, we don't really we don't really get rid of the initial uh, free kick. And Chauvin kind of runs behind, completely unmarked. Just goes past behind us and manages to strike it home for 1-1. We get a piece of luck here, um, which leads to our second goal. And only, I think, um, the, uh, yeah, no, that wasn't it. The um, It leads to, I think, our only Zivkovic's third goal of the season and his first since the opening day. And it's just, I think, it's a... Um, no, this isn't it, because I know exactly what happened. It's a header down from one of their keeper or one of their central defenders trying to head it back to the keeper and he lays it short form and Zivkovic manages to pounce in. Uh, I was thinking at this stage, oh bloody hell, please don't make us lose. Like please don't let them score another one kinda on the break I suppose. But Manaz yeah heads it by and Savinov tries to head it back to the keeper but Zivkovic just steals in and manages to keep his composure to finish off to make it two one. Um like not the um, best goal you'll ever see, but at least it was a goal for it was a goal for the team, and also it was a goal for Ziv, which is good for his confidence. And then we got a penalty in the 90th minute, which guess who? Alex Julie converted. They had a man sent off in the 89th minute as well, Matthias Abel, but it really didn't have any effect on the game. And then lastly, we did travel to definitely well Syria new boys, but already relegation threatened Barry. And we managed to win 2-0. As you can see, they had two shots in the whole game. Zero on target. One half chance, but zero in everything else. And we, we dominated the game. And Julie won the game 2-0. Um, we scored two goals pretty early on. So, a little bit disappointing, I suppose, that we didn't make it a rout. But like, like the Lazio game. But we kind of took our foot off the accelerator in, that, in the second half. Another goal in this game for Mbai Niang, though, which is an excellent form for such a young guy. Um, he just takes a touch there. Zivkovic managed to, to put it in for him. It's a good bit of play by Zivkovic. And he just manages to take a touch and then slot it into the corner beautifully to give us a 1-0 advantage in this game. And then Giacomo Bonaventura makes it to only six minutes later, I think. Um, and Manoz... Find it de Young, found even De Young, found Bonaventura, who kind of just slightly peeled away and put his shot behind our beyond Pernus, Duzan Pernus in goal, which gave us a 2 0 win. And that leads us up to today's game. We've had actually an international break between that game and now. So we've had a two week kind of, I suppose, rest for the guys. But I don't think really a rest was needed because we were doing so well. Seven games into the season, six, ones, one, six wins, one draw, scored 15, only conceded three, and we've got 19 points. And as you can see, Roma and Juventus are second and third, respectively. Um, but they've both played a game in hand, mo they've played a game more, sorry, than us, and they're four and five points, uh, like, respectively, down against the Juventus have already lost two games. Sampdoria now uh, claimed a 1-0 win over them. Roma lost 5-0 to Juventus. We have not lost a game yet. But when you, you do look at it, like we've had, apart from that Napoli game, we have had a fairly straightforward um, first bit of the season, really. Um, like games like Bologna, Lazio, even the Genoa game, which we didn't win, Barry, 
Torino. Udinese is a tough enough game, but you know they're they're winnable games. And I think we we kind of we've had to do what we've done here to have any chance of competing for the Champions League because we're gonna enter into real tough games against Roma, Juventus, Inter, people like that. We haven't played zero of the three there. Napoli, we've played, of course. Uh, Fiorentina, we're playing today. Apart from that, like the big names. There's not many other big names really in the league these days. If we have a look at the overall uh, player statistics for ourselves, uh, top scorer is Niang with five. Bonaventura's got four, Zivkovic and Alex both have three. Uh, Bonaventura's got four assists, Zivkovic with three, Desiglio with three. And average rating wise, top five are Enriquez, Bonaventura, Desiglio, Munoz, and Lopez. So we'll get into today's game. Of which we've uh, got a debutante playing today. Um, not because he's a new signing. Well, he is a new signing, but he's only finally back from injury. So we've got Lili in goal. Because uh, Lopez is just coming back. I think he's going to be back in two days. So he'll. this will probably be Lili's last game in goal. Yeah, for this little stunt he's had. Which he's been quite good, actually. Uh, if we have a look at his, at his performances. You know, uh, he's conceded five in seven. With three clean sheets, so not a bad performance whatsoever from him. Yarmolenko, um, Umtiti making his debut, and this is just because um, this is the first time he's got a chance to play. Play, he was eight for six. Um, he was there for the full preseason, and then picked up a six-week injury. I think around two days before the first game of the season, which was a bit of a stinker for him. Uh, but he recovered just uh, just when the international break started, so he's had a good two weeks to uh, kind of get into fitness. He's uh, partnered beside the youngster Marlon and Asiguio Manaz with the Skiglio at right wing back. Polly and Honda are the two mid uh, are the midfield two. That's because our normal midfield two, Nigel de Jong, is out for six to ten days, and Nuestroy is out for two to three weeks. Angelo Enriquez is still out for another four to six weeks, so he's not returning any time soon. Uh, but we've got to ensure playing behind Onyang and Zivkovic. So that's been like apart from those midfield two, and I suppose Umtiti's coming in. Like Umtiti's coming in for Alex uh, as a bit of a straight swap, just because he's a bit of a younger version, and I prefer him to uh, be playing than Alex. Uh, apart from that and the midfield two. Like that's really been the as per usual uh, starting lineup. Niang has mostly got the nod ahead of Ings, um, especially since his goal against Napoli, and he, he's he's took it well. Like he he's not the most prolific player on the park, but he has got five goals this year and is our top performer in front of goal. So you can't really ask for much more from him. Anyway, as we get today's game underway, and Decilio already whipped in one cross. Will, will he whip in another? Finds Honda now. Can we spread it to the left wing back? No, he gets dispossessed. Um, he could be caught on the break here. Oh no, Umtiti. Oh, that's very classy play. Under pressure there from Matos, I think. Uh, but here come Fiorentina. Oh no. Oh, Venuti should have scored. He just snuck behind Ezekiel Manaz there. And Manaz wasn't too aware of him, I don't think. And we get away with that. So we've got a, we've had a life in this game. Uh, if it wasn't, if it was probably Mario Gomez 1-0. I was going to say if it was a more prolific player on the park at that stage, that would have been 1-0. But this time the chance does fall to a prolific player in Mario Gomez. And we are 1-0 behind here after just 12 minutes. And this has been an awful start to the game. I do believe that midfield 2 is going to end up creating havoc for ourselves. Like the mid our midfield 2. Because I don't think Polly and Honda are good enough really. Honda can sometimes come on. Uh, but I think I, I prefer him actually playing behind the striker. And um, Polly I don't really rate at all. Like based just on our current squad, but based on the squad we began to build up, like he was our first team regular last year was Polly, but this year he's just slipped. You know he's he's down there now, a kind of fifth best midfielder or something, fourth fifth. Um, maybe I should have started Montalivo instead of him. I'm not sure. With those sort of guys, I get very um betwixt and between who who to go for, uh, because 
Really, I, I don't f fancy any of them, to be honest, as we're waiting for this 3D highlight for um, ever. It's finally come, and it is lagging like fuck. Uh, Mario Gomez just strikes it, and he gets an open chance. Um, and there was no stopping it when Gomez had, had that opportunity, and he wasn't going to miss it. And we need to book ourselves up here after a sloppy start. And we haven't been the biggest scores, like again this year, we haven't been the biggest scores. We've just we've scored enough to kind of get ourselves by. We scored fifteen in seven games, which I suppose isn't too bad, but when you consider six of them was in one game, uh, nine in six is not bad but it's not great. It's Pedro Obiang. What the hell has he done there? Well that's a third clear cut chance for AC Milan or for Fiorentina even after only seventeen minutes. Zivkovic has now picked up a knock. We're going to keep him on just for now, see if he can try and run it off. Uh, and then we'll probably bring out on Ings at some stage. Honda finds Mbai Niang inside, finds Honda, Manaz out to right. Thank you, Honda. Zivkovic! I, I'm not sure whether Zivkovic got a little touch on that or whether actually that one just went straight through from Honda. It's quite hard to uh, tell on this 2D. But here's Honda, maybe another chance. Bonaventura. 1-1, one, one. there you go, Giacomo Bonaventura, one of our key players. Um, he started really turning into a good player at the end of last year, and he really uh, dragged that fantastic form into this season, because um, he's been very good in front of goal and assisting. As there, he shows a good bit of composure, a good little bit of skill, and then a decent enough bit of uh, finishing. He's the captain today. Uh, that's because our captain Montalivo doesn't really get a start. And Diego Lopez, of course, is injured. He's the vice captain. Um, and we we're, we're still a bit lucky, though, I think, to be 1-1 at this, at this stage. When you consider the three clear-cut chances that Fiorentina had, to only take one of them was a bit of a curse on their point of view. But we've got to try and capitalise on that and really make them pay for not taking those opportunities when we did give them to them. Because we've been a little better since the goal, but we, we haven't created. Uh, Umtiti's picked up his first yellow card. Uh, I think he's an aggressive sort of guy, Umtiti, though, so I think you can expect to see a fair whack of that throughout his time here. And I'm going to say I'm uh, not happy, and we're going to bump it up to attacking uh, for this second half. We're going to bring on Danny Ings for Zivkovic. Zivkovic, I was trying to make, I was trying to see whether he could run it off. It didn't look like him. Um, he didn't seem to be too bad, actually, conditioning-wise, but just uh, his performance was definitely being effective. 6.4, he wasn't really helping us at all being on the pitch. So, um, therefore, we, we have decided to take him off. But Danny Ings hasn't been the biggest goal machine since coming in, and Tuskeglio's now picked him a knock. Now, this injury stuff is starting to get on my nerves a little bit, especially if uh, somebody like Zivkovic and uh, Tuskeglio get injured for a little while, you know, especially Duskiglio. He's been probably our best player this year, I'd have said. But um, that's just my matter of opinion. Some TT, he could have took a touch there. Because I just have this awful feeling that they're going to carve through another chance here. Matos, Pedro Obiang. And I think if it falls to Mario Gomez, it could definitely be 2-1. If it falls to somebody else, maybe not. But there it is, it's fallen to Mario Gomez. Oh! Bloody hell, we've just about survived. Venuti, yeah. So Gomez misses the opportunity, and then um, with nobody to bring in at right wing back. So unfortunately, it's gonna have to we're gonna have to do with the Siglio for now. And if he gets really bad, we'll have to try and put in a makeshift right wing back somewhere. But to be honest, this really hasn't been quite good enough from ourselves. And I'm going to uh, make a touchline team talk and say demand more. Like, I don't regularly use the touchline team talks. I do sometimes, though, because I think they're handy enough and uh, little tools to have. And Niang, oh, it's not a great ball, but he finds Polly, I think inadvertently, but to Skiglio, back to Niang, who's kind of made a little bit of a run inside. Finds Honda, no, it's just scrambled away, but we've still got a chance. It's still got sustained pressure. Yarmolenko, oh, Bonaventura, 2-1! Oh, not a great bit of keeping, but nonetheless, it has given us a 2-1 advantage. Nesso, I think he'll regret seeing this one again. He won't want to see this one too many times. 
on TC feeds in Yarmolenko, who puts a kind of ahead of Bonaventura, but he runs onto it well, and Neto just parries it, but he parries it straight into the back of the net, uh, just into the corner. Pretty awful bit of keeping, as I, as I was saying. Niang, now Bonaventura, Bonaventura looking for a hat-trick, of course, to Skiglio. Niang, oh, maybe another chance, maybe to make it 3-1. Bonaventura, hat-trick! Fantastic play from the AMC, and it is a hat-trick hero from Giacomo Bonaventura. And if it wasn't for him today, we would, I think, be staring down the barrel at defeat, because he's been the only one who's actually taken it upon himself to... Um, Score the goals, and with that little two goal cushion, I feel confident that I can take off to Skiglio now. And we're going to bring on Timothy uh, Kolodziak. Uh, I know he's a left wing back, but now let's see what he can do on the right as a right wing back. He's he he is makeshift. That's why I'm really hoping that the Skiglio isn't out for too long because I think he is our only um, like definite right wing back we have in the team. I think a bat. Well, no, we have a bat, eh? but I think he's still out injured. So, um, we do have a bat. I, I've forgotten about him, but as I said, I do think he's still out injured. Pedro Obiang. It is three two. God, this game isn't done yet. Pedro Obiang scores for their fourth clear cut chance. No, actually, I don't think that even counted as a clear cut chance. So they've they've wasted three clear cut chances this uh, in this match. Still. Pedro Obiang with a very good header, you know, um, running away from goal. And to get the balance and get the power in his shot is quite an effort from him. And now Fiorentina are mounting another charge. They have obviously stepped it on overload and are going for it. But it's back to Neto now, who hasn't had the best of games in goal for them. And uh, if they do lose, I think he'll be one to blame, I have to say. Sal Salafu and Valero. Oh no, Harnick's in behind. Harnick, Manaz, oh, that's a risky tackle, but it's a good tackle in the end. And that's a direct ball from Timothy. Uh, I'm not, on on the whole, I'm not going to try and pronounce Timothy's second name, Colod Zianak. I'm probably just going to end up calling him Timothy. But Bonaventura could settle this game, and this time he can't take the opportunity. He can't pounce on his fourth goal. And uh, give us back, restore us that two goal cushion. And instead, we're still still a bit on edge here. I've, I've kept it on control because I'm, I'm looking to kind of control the game out, you know what I mean? And uh, not invite any pressure, just um, as, as it kind of states, just uh, Widmer, are you taking the piss out of me? Sylvan Widmer in the 93rd minute. Has made it AC Milan 3, Fiorentina 3. And really with the... It's a poor bit of defending. But with the team... With the, with the way we've been playing, like... And the good form we've been getting. And a bit of luck in some instances. I suppose... That was coming. But nonetheless, it's still a sickener when it does come. Uh, it really is. I can't. It means that Bonaventura's hat trick doesn't go to a winning performance, which is disappointing because he deserved it to. Um, it still means like we're still in a good position. We're five points clear at the top, and we're still unbeaten. Like it's not like we lost the game, but to have a uh, the Skiglia there for two weeks, it could be worse, I suppose. Uh, but to have a three-one lead with ten minutes to go, still twelve minutes to go, and to blow it up against a team like Fiorentina, not even a like a back rated team, let's be honest. One of the better ones, but I'd expecting I'd be expecting us to keep hold of a lead uh, in that sort of situation. But we didn't, and we've gotta go on. Now this is actually a fairly big month in terms like if I, I went just by Monday it would be the Sampdoria game. But actually I'm gonna come up uh, for the come back for the game at home to Roma because it's a bit of a bigger game I suppose. And it's a random, no, it's less than a month, but we've got a fair few games in, in between then and now. We've got a bit of a congested schedule with all the Europa League games and all that. Anyway, if you guys did enjoy this video, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. I'll see you guys later. Bye.